our Saturday night thrift haul. Um, we are super excited because I found a ton of Fiesta wear today. It was like a little Fiesta scavenger hunt all over the thrift store. So we got caught up in that and we weren't actually having a good thrift store haul anyway. I was about to, I was like thinking about what to name this thrift store haul. I'm like, we could just name it We Failed at the Thrift Store because... I didn't fail? No, before we found the Fiesta oh. and stuff, I was thinking of this while we were at the thrift store. I'm like, what are we going to call this? Because we didn't find a lot of stuff today. We don't have time to drive to eight thrift stores. <laughs> so I like found a few things and a few more things. So we're going to show you our thrift haul. If you're new to our channel, make sure you hit that subscribe and notification button. We go live every Saturday at 8.30 Mountain Time. Show you what we got and do a little painting. All right, so we're going to go knock out the furniture stuff first. I guess this is on top of it, so we will talk about this. This is just, I don't know, is this silver, tarnished silver, something of that nature. We'll call it that. Um, oh, we're far away. It is, it is tarnished closer. silver. It's Oneida, made in the USA. It's pretty heavy. Um, I paid uh, $1 for it, and it'll sell for about, I don't know, 6 bucks in the shop. These are really popular because people like to put their rings in them. Um, it does look like it may have had soap in it, so I'll probably soak it a little bit and just get the soap out. But I do not, I do not polish the tarnish off because I like to leave it the way that it yeah, is. Yeah, we'll leave some of. Don't the, paint uh, the Fiesta wear. Don't worry, Marilyn. <laughs> not only is it Fiesta wear, but it's old Fiesta wear. So. Yeah, we. Uh, so Jamie found. All right. Well, let's tell him about the Fiesta wear. So oh, then you get you got to move the camera over there then because I'm gonna bring it over. Okay, I'll bring it so over. So we to show have uh, one, two, three, four, five, one, four, five, six, seven, seven of these plates. They're divided. These are the ten and a half inch Fiesta wear. Um, this is the Fiesta wear with the lower cased F, which means it's vintage Fiesta wear. That's what I I'm not like a super big uh, Fiesta wear uh, aficionado, but from the research I did. If it has the lower case F, then it is, um, it's older. Then it is older. If you know anything about Fiesta wear, I would love for you to chime in because I don't know. I'm not even sure how to sell this. If I'm going to, this bench is like cutting me in the face. Here, I'll move it. You'll spill stuff off the end. Okay. There you I'll go. move it in a sec. <laughs> so the reason she starts, she looked at it and she's like, oh, that's real fit. Fiesta wear. And I think you only had like two or three plates when you got started. And then she started digging through the plate section and found a bunch and then wasn't there some in other parts of the store yeah too? they were all over the place so i found some in the plates and then i found some in like the serving dishes and then i found the mugs in the mug section and then i was in the christmas section and some of the mugs were in the christmas section i think i actually found it in four different places but when i started to like uncover the fiesta wear i realized that somebody must have dropped off an entire collection and that got me excited. And then Zeb's like trying to find other stuff. And all I'm thinking is I'm going to find more of this. Like I was like, I'm going to find every last piece that they have in there. So I believe that they either have more of it behind and they haven't put it out yet. Or it kind of got picked over because it didn't get put out together. And this is what was left. Because it doesn't look like a full set. But it's all vintage and in pretty good condition. A few pieces have chips. Um, but it leads me to believe that there was a collector of the piece, especially these divided plates are pretty, um, pretty desirable. So was, these ones here are fun. They've got... Yeah, was this at the DI? Yes, this is at the DI in American Fork. And I saw um, Lisa there. She follows me. And I had, honestly, I thought, I think it's been two or three days since I had showered. <laughs> two or three days? Yeah, it had been a few days. And she was like... I feel like I'm eating a slippery and I didn't know what to say. And I'm like, I haven't showered in three days. I was like, why did I tell her that? <laughs> I don't even know. Because you mean, tell people everything. My face, my hair's greasy, so it's pretty obvious. But I, I, I was kind of worried, like, if you come too deep, close and you sniff me, I'm disclaiming. Like, <laughs> I haven't showered. So these are, we thought these were bowls. They're categorized online as small plates. I don't know. Do, are they bowls or plates? Do you guys know? Um... So, I, I did shower though, just so y'all know. I showered before I came on tonight. So, I'm squeaky clean for you guys. So, we found prices ranging from like $20 a piece to 40. What, about 40? Um, if those plates, if the divided plates were 12 inch, they would be more valuable than 10 and a half inch plates. Oh, soup bowls. 
Sandra says I'm just a very open person. I'm just kind of awkward sometimes. <laughs> Let's be honest, I'm a little awkward. Um, yeah, so we found all of these bowls. The bottom one does have a chip, but I went ahead and got it because for a dollar I was like, somebody might want that. We only have one plate in this orange and it's got the best stamp on it too. Yeah, so the orange, so there's some that's radioactive, but I think it's the red and I don't think, I don't think it's that orange color. So we only have three regular plates. Radioactive. My, yeah, like some of the Fiesta work. This is my favorite color right here. And then the lady was like, when we were checking out, she, she was very patient with me because we wrapped each individual plate. I'm like, this is money. We can't, we can't just throw this. And then some gal was behind us like flipping over my stuff in line. I'm like, don't touch my stuff. You want to buy it? Come to Jamie Ray Vintage at 1245 West Main Street. <laughs> just kidding. I didn't say that. I'm, I'm a nice thrifter. I just smiled at her. So this was the big haul of the day. Um, yeah. So we hauled a lot of it. And I did buy, and I did not find the cups and the saucers together. Oh no. Like these were in one area. And here's the thing. Do you guys know some Fiesta wear? So this is marked Fiesta wear, right? This is the rose colored. This was not marked Fiesta wear and I almost passed it up, but I Googled it. Now, I use the Google at the thrift store a lot and I Googled it and I said, does, does some vintage Fiesta wear not have uh, markings? So some of the older vintage Fiesta wear doesn't have markings and they said, and then they listed the things like teacups and a few other things that back in the day didn't have markings because it would have been sold together and the plate had a marking. So luckily I Googled that. So never be afraid if you're not sure if something's valuable or not, or you have a question, Google it while you're in the thrift store. Well, first put it in your cart, then Google it. Because if you leave it on the, if you on, leave it on the shelf, it's, on the fair shelf game. it's fair game. So I put it on my cart and then I ask questions later. So just lots of fun colors. Yep. So I have a few of those. And then these are teacups by uh, this coffee cup actually does have the Fiesta wear on the bottom of that. This, so these ones, I'm not 100% positive that they're Fiesta wear, but they are some sort of California pottery. And I think Fiesta wear only because they have the corrugated sides, the coloring seems to be correct. And they have these indicative like three spots on the bottom, which a lot of the Fiesta wear did. So if you know about Fiesta wear, how do you tell certain things? Like I could tell the little one was a match because it fit on that cup, but ooh, super chat from Yamoko DeBold. You are amazing. Thanks for the super chat. They said I should keep the Fiesta wear. Unfortunately, I do not have Fiesta wear children. This should live with somebody whose children will appreciate it <laughs> because my kids will not. I can't have anything worth, worth a lot. I'm going to be selling the Fiesta wear probably individual pieces. I haven't decided if I'm gonna sell them in the shop. So these cost anywhere from 75 cents um, up to $1.50. And they're worth anywhere from like, you know, four or five bucks for a cup to um, like $30 for a divided plate. So that can give you an idea on um, value. And we looked, we probably spent 20 minutes, well, maybe 10. It's not like 20 minutes. Looking for the top of, of the this butter, butter dish. dish. And this has oh. a different logo on it, so it might even be older. I don't know if it's older or what, but it's the lowercase f. Ooh, Sally Von Zwell, more super chat. Thanks, Thank Sally. You, Sally. Um, so this is just, but I thought maybe somebody has the top and their bottom broke, you know, so mm -hmm. I didn't want to leave this there. So I went ahead and picked this up. Um, it says Fiesta Ware is made from Homer Laughlin in Ohio who made Ironstone in the late 1800s, um, before they started to make Fiesta Ware. Fun fact. I, I knew Homer Laughlin, um, made it. So that is pretty good. Thanks to show 78. If she you guys knows, are interested in Fiesta Ware, you can email, uh, Lehigh shop at jamierayvintage.com. If Caitlin's on here, which I haven't seen her on here, but if Caitlin's on here, I'll have her drop the email address. If not, we'll put it in the description box when we're no longer live. Because I know sometimes people want to buy it and have us ship it to them. That's kind of dark. Oh, what is Super Chat? Super Chat is kind of like a tip. So sometimes followers will be like, hey, I want to tip you for making this awesome video. And then they send us money to help support our Got channel. a couple little chips there. Yeah, but I could pass it up even with a few little chips. So if the, if the chipped ones don't sell, maybe I'll keep those because my kids Well, this one's got the right coloring to like sit on our shelves with oh, their other sorry. stuff. Caitlin is on. She says that the email, she put the email in there. So if you're interested in anything that we're showing tonight and you like it shipped, you can email. Shipping does vary usually anywhere from $10 to $20 and then larger items obviously are more. This one has a fun handle on it. 
New subscriber, Grimes Fines. Welcome, welcome. Um, Jana Belton says, how has the shop biz been? It has been a lot more work than I expected. Well, and we were really super, super busy last week with all the sales dirt around um, this Thanksgiving. Is a little picture and of creamer. This week has been much slower. It's like it's everybody came good. in to the catch the deals. The website's slow. The shop is slow. Today was actually the shop actually outperformed the website today. Yeah. Which normally doesn't happen. So the shop wasn't super amazing. It was just good, and the website was you know just be warm buying paint today. So that's all right. All right. Well, we're also heading into that time of year where. People are, they're either done crafting for their shows People or... People are never done crafting. You always do more. <laughs> or they're out shopping for like gifts they don't have to make. Uh, Rebecca says she's hopefully she can drop by on her Friday on her way back from St. George. We would oh, love to yeah. see you we'll, in the shop. We'll be open 10 we'll to 6 open, on open, Friday. Open. So this I found, it's not um, Fiesta Wear, but it is some sort of glazed pottery. And it, I guess it could be Fiesta Wear. Do you guys know? It was. I'm wondering if it was a similar collector. Show it to him close. It's got some cracking and glazing in it. I just thought it was really pretty. The green is just gorgeous on it. Almost like a Jedi green, but it's ceramic. <laughs> BB from Spain. Everybody wrong. Check the estuary. The deep plates are salad plates. The bowls or soup bowls are different. Okay. Wow. We didn't know one way or the other, so we were neither wrong nor right because we don't know. <laughs> All right. Let's see, what is he, what, what did Rachel, every single, oh, hello everyone, my daughter got engaged tonight, Rachel Hicks. Congrats, Rachel. Caitlin says, hey, hey the website has some more hours. Caitlin's, uh, Caitlin's web, the website's her baby, so we gotta be careful, we can't say anything about it. Oh, Cartson Millie, super chat, $14.99. She is a Australian retailer for our JRB stencils, and she has been rocking it down there in the down under with the stencils, and she also carries IOD and lots of great DIY products. Oh, I don't like that angle either. Sorry, I've been watching the camera and I'm like, uh, this that, angle's fine. That was a little dark. I, we're still working on the lighting. So setup. I found some carnival glass today. Can you guys see? It's like iridescent. This is just like a little candy dish. It was a dollar fifty. Um, I'll probably sell it for like three ninety five. And this is just a candle holder, a similar style, but this one's a candle holder. It was also a dollar fifty, and I'll probably sell it for three ninety five to maybe even four ninety five. I need to look them up. I love carnival glass. I think it's really pretty. My grandma collected it. So maybe that's why I'm into. And I like the clear iridescent more than like the blue or the like yellow orange carnival glass. How much were those? Huh? How oh, they were $1.50 and we'll probably sell them. I, was, I said $3.95, but probably $4.95 a piece for these. So we, I found this quirky little guy over in the porcelain <laughs> stuff and I couldn't pass him up. And he, he was uh, 75 cents, his sticker fell off, but he's got a chip up here, so he's going to get painted. I'm not sure what color yet, but lots of fun detail on him, and he's not very big. It's just a sh little shelf sitter. I called him Hey Hey, like from Moana. <laughs> and then Jamie found this large hen. Woo woo! Three dollars, it'll sell for $19.95. We had a rooster that we painted apothecary last week or the week before, and that sold. So when I found this hen, I was super excited. Um, we usually find roosters, so it's always fun when you can find a hen. It definitely is going to be apothecary with white wax because that's what's sold. <coughs> they don't drink coffee. No. Occasionally I drink soda. Zeb doesn't drink any soda. All right. All right, I'm gonna come over here. I did have two Hershey's Kisses before we went live because I, I was up late with my friends last night. We went to a movie and then I didn't sleep well, so I, I'm a little bit tired. So the two Hershey's Kisses got me going. So I found this in the crafting section at the thrift store. It's just kind of like a burlap type uh, ribbon, but it's got wire around the edge. It's got a wired edge so you can shape it and form it. We'll find something to do with that. Yeah, every now and then when I'm setting up a vignette, I'll need like crafting supplies. And for $1.50, it's definitely worth it because I think for this much, um, how many feet is this? Does it say? So I don't know. Oh, it doesn't say, but I would say this is probably at least $9.95. And I like the frayed edge. The, it's actually burlap. Is it? So yeah, it's burlap with a frayed edge. And then Jamie picked up this basket. I'm not sure what her plans are with this basket. It looks like the type of basket that sits over your armrest. No, that's for your stairs. Oh, it goes on your you stairs. You put them at the bottom of your stairs, and then you find stuff that needs to go upstairs, and you put it in there, and then you haul the basket upstairs. 
And these are really popular here in Utah because almost everybody has an upstairs and a downstairs. And I get asked if we have stair baskets all the time. And I like the style on that one. How much did I pay for that? You paid $3 for that one. So this will probably sell for like um, $14.95 to $19.95. And I won't paint it. I like the style. That's so small. I don't even know if I can show it to you good. I found a baby Jesus. I did. And it's, it's, it's the right time of year. But I'm just going to... I might make just like a little little crush or something for this guy just because I liked it so much. I was just going to paint him. He was 75 cents and I think painted, he would be worth at least $3.95. It's porcelain. Oh, cute. I thought it was resin, but it's not. Oh. Sorry, I'm going to stand over you here. Could even, you know what you could do, Zeb? You could even like, um, could you put like a little hook in here and make it into an ornament hanging on a tree? You could, yeah. It says Noel at the end of the baby cradle. It's really cute. All right, so we got this sugar dish. I actually picked this up for the sole purpose that it still had its serving spoon with it. This is cute. How much was that? It was $1.50. That's a dollar fifty. So that's like a three ninety five to four ninety five item here in the shop. Not everything we sell is vintage or antique. Some of it's just cute. And rather than buying it wholesale, which a lot of boutiques will buy in mass wholesale, we just buy things, um, you know, thrifting and found. So that way, when people come, it's always unique. Okay, so what's that? I have no idea. This, this is a dollar, and I got this for the shop studio. I plan on hanging it up on the roof. It's a, it's for hanging a TV, but I'm gonna use it for my tripod, and it's pretty stiff. I might loosen the bolts up a little bit, but you can move it around, angle it. Oh, I'm breaking it too. Break it. Break it, but you can kind of turn it how you want. And I'm hoping to get some sweet camera angles and close-ups with this for you guys in current or future projects. I mean, not current. Well, we're always working on, we're, like we just did this wall this last week. And so we're working on getting our studio up to speed. So Zeb's looking for ways to hang cameras and um, microphones, more lighting in here, more uh, soundproofing. So we got lots of things. Well, and this is not from the dollar store. This is left over from the boys room makeover that we did. This is actually from Ikea, but it had a lamp on it. And I'm thinking the camera will be nice on that too. Yeah. Make a separate boom. I forgot that we had that. No, I don't think I'm we ever even around. put that lamp up. Um, it was up for a little bit and the boys knocked it off three times in like the first hour it was up. <laughs> so... Alright, you're gonna, right, I'm next, gonna come back in. You're people gonna keep to... asking about my baby doll. So this is a vintage, well I would say retro because it's from 1985. Um, I checked the, where did I find the age? Hey, if it's over 20 years, it's vintage. It's 1985. I can't remember where <laughs> it had the date on it. The, it says 1978, 1982, but somewhere it said 90. Oh, so on the signature on the bum, it says 85. And I was born in 82, so I'm not going to call this vintage. I'm going to say it's retro. That thing's 34 years old. Yeah, so this thing is going to get a good soak in the old OxyClean and a little bit of cleanup with some alcohol and a Q tip. It was a dollar. It has a vintage Cabbage Patch outfit on there. And I would say that. Um, it's probably worth like fourteen ninety five, you know. And if nobody buys it, my dog. I wish that it had both socks. I'm sad the other socks listed missing. But if nobody buys it, then I will just give it to my daughter. She's ten and she's kind of outgrowing dolls, but I think she would think this was fun. And I had a doll just like this growing up, so. I thought, it was a nostalgic purchase. Yeah, it, for a dollar, I'm like, I'm just gonna take care of my baby. All right, but it hasn't been washed yet, so don't yeah, hug so it let's too put close. It over there. Don't hug it too close. It has a crack on it. I didn't see it. Oh, yeah. It has some marker on it. It has face. a crack on it on the bum. <laughs> <laughs> Anything before 1999 is considered vintage on Etsy. Well, me and Etsy are not friends then. Yep, 20 years. Just buy socks in the Edmund section. All right, so this little rocker was in the wood section. $2. Does the cabbage patch doll also, fit in there? No. It's also in two pieces. So I'm actually not going to glue it together until I paint the bottom because I think it'll be easier to paint separated and then I'll put it back together. The cabbage patch is not... You're going to break the chair. No way. It's a little large. It's the plus size edition. Oh, Les said she had a wonderful day. She just wanted to tell somebody. Awesome, Les. Okay, so... And Anna Warren said this, and I'm gonna, I want to read it because I'll tell you a little story about my grandma. It says, Memories waiting in Black Friday line to buy for my daughter, LOL. So when those Cabbage Patch dolls first came out that Black Friday, I was a newborn in 1982. 
And whenever they first came out, my grandma wanted me to have one and she stood in line and like, if you see the videos, like look them up, they'll show them like Cabbage Patch videos from Black Friday and people are freaking out, like throwing elbows in the 80s, like trying to get a Cabbage Patch doll. And that was my dad's mom. That's, that's how, no, that was her. She was hardcore and she got me a Cabbage Patch doll and it's, I don't know, somewhere around the house. But anyway, so yeah, Anna did the same. I'm sure Anna was much nicer about it, but my grandma, my grandma wrote, my mom's like, it's just a doll. And he's like... I want Jamie to have it. So anyways, there we go. <laughs> All right, so we've got this glass pitcher. They sell well here in the shop. We just clean them up real good. Sometimes we'll put stuff in them, sometimes we won't. This was $1.50, but anytime we can find unique kind of containers like this, we, we snag them up. And usually they sell for about six or seven bucks. No, I would say that's probably eight, eight or nine. Eight or nine. Yeah. And I like to group them together. I don't have a lot right now, but when I get them, I'll put all the apothecary jars together and I can put fun things in them. Um, so we have a bunch of like um, antique wheels we could put in there, just like fun odds and ends. So this bird's probably going apothecary if I had to guess. Um, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure, but I wanted to pick it up because I wanted to start putting birds on the tops of my candles. I figured it out. I angled the light the other day. Oh, and that's right. why everything. Oh, but it's just so bright. Oh, there you go. We're going to be changing the lighting that, soon, too. That guys. bird was what, like a dollar? Uh, yes, a dollar. So it'll sell for probably like six ninety five painted. Pebby says, "All right, Cabbage Patch was insane. Wait in line to get one. So were original Beanie Babies." Yeah, the Beanie Babies. I mean, there's still there's people who have entire rooms full of those. My kids like the Beanie Boos, the ones with the big eyes. They all love them. Jack has some of his favorites. And they, sometimes the kids will get them all together and make like a Beanie Boo Zoo. So these frames were in the frame section hiding. I had to unbury them a little bit, but I saw this top piece poking out behind some frames. And then I found the other friend once I got to unburying. And they're small. They're what, like a six or five by seven probably. Yeah. And they were how much? They were two dollars a piece, but they're they've got a lot of detail, yeah. and they do they do stand on their own, or they can be hung. So this size sells for anywhere from ten to twelve dollars, and I don't like to leave them without anything in them. I actually <laughs> have a picture of a wedding couple, black and white, off the Google, and I put it in all of them. I'm gonna need to get a few more in my repertoire, but I just print out <laughs> black and white pictures and put them in there, and it makes them look cute. So if we can get this painted fast enough, we're going to paint this and stencil this bench tonight. It was $12. It's pretty, pretty long bench. And we are not upcycling the Fiesta wear, don't worry. Yeah, the Fiesta wear we're it's leaving awesome alone. As is. It is missing some of these plugs on the end. It's missing three of them. So I'll probably take that fourth one out. I have some half inch plugs that will work in there, but they're a different style. So we'll pull those out. I don't have them here. They're over at the, at the garage at the house. Okay, so um, while I'm painting that, Zeb is going to show you how to use some non-Fiesta wear dishes, just your standard dishes that you pick up at any thrift store rather inexpensively, and some mugs, and he's going to make a tiered uh, tray. Yeah. Now, I'm going to disclaim that I saw a cute one that I liked, and then Zeb said I can do that, but I did not confirm approve these dishes, so I have no <laughs> idea what design he's going to come up with but I think he's gonna do a tiered tray, so. So I was looking for dishes that were white with like, I, I had I had a couple of these that had these little dots around the edge, but I dropped one, so then I had to go hunting for more. <laughs> so uh, we paid didn't. $12 for the bench, somebody just asked. We will sell it for around 50, probably 49.95. So, all right, I'm gonna clear off the Fiesta wear here so that we can paint. Okay. Scooch some of your situation there, sweetie. What situation? You might need to stand up too for a minute until we yeah. get this. Yeah, no, I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna stand up and paint. Okay. You know, you can put all the fiesta wear back there on the. Don't I'm, put it on the floor. I'm just gonna set it right here for now. Alright, I'm gonna get a brush. Oops. I just put I just the side now. The shuffle. Well, you know, shuffle, we, we set this up so we could be more organized and we haven't, we haven't added the organization yet. It's not, not organized just yet. Just don't come through that that uh, drop cloth hot. I'm gonna paint the top first because we want to stencil that. Okay. So you're gonna want to make sure your piece is clean. 
And then you can go ahead and paint it. I'm not going to um, sand this piece. I'm just going to paint it with the DIY paint. It'll stick very well to it. And while I'm painting this, Seb, I mean, I've been seeing me paint a million times, so why don't you, one, I'll paint, but then while you're doing that, and then you can move the camera so they can watch you do your magic with your tiered tray. My tiered tray magic. The, the tiered tray is all him. So if it's awesome, it's all him. If it's not awesome, it's all him. And you guys, it's kind of, we just want to show you the idea. And then maybe you guys could find some. If you, if you can't tell, Jamie does not love my plate selection. Well, <laughs> I don't hate we, it. We discussed it off camera beforehand. She's like, I don't like any of I felt like some of the plates needed to be <laughs> bigger and the mugs needed to be smaller. But I was I have going faith. with what I found in the store. I have faith that you can make something awesome out of it. So I'm just using the we'll Dusty see. to paint this bench in White Swan. All right, I'm going to scoot you over you and you started painting before I was ready. Oh, I thought I was supposed to be painting. I don't want to get, well, I guess if I get paint on the Fiesta water, I can wipe it off. All right, so I'm using E6000. We've actually done this before with glass um, Sunday mugs or cups or whatever you and want to call them. And people told me that they wouldn't sell, but guess what? I sold all, I took Sunday cups and I flipped them upside down and put pink scallop plates on the top and I sold every single one of them. Well, and they held together really, really well. It took six months, but, but I sold them. Oh, and I've got, I got this ruler. I also thrifted this ruler, 75 cents, gonna use it here at the shop. Um, but I need to go grab my little marker that I had. I, was, I got here, I was like, then what are you gonna do with this ruler? Like, I'm gonna use it as a ruler. I'm like, oh, that is a novel idea. Using a ruler. I always think about upcycling everything, so I just assumed he bought it for a project. I have seen people use vintage rulers in fun ways, but this one is not vintage. Ooh, super chat from Dina and Jane. Thank you. Um, Dina says, for all you guys do in showing the tiered trays, love you guys. What? We got a super chat for showing this tiered trays, so hopefully it's good. It'll, the, the concept is fun. You could do it with any kind of dish you want. So I'm just going to measure, kind of get the center diameter in here. It looks like it's 11 and a quarter. What does that have? 11 and, stop, and a quarter? Don't around in the paper over there. That's loud. Yeah, 11 and a quarter. So we've got five and... Five and a half and an eighth or something. Yeah, we'll go with that. Five and five eighths. <laughs> I can't do math on a Saturday night. I know, right? On camera live. Oh, that was dead center. Okay. There you go, boom, bit. apparently I can do math live, <laughs> camera. Okay, so I have these, and I'm thinking, I'm just gonna set it down there like that, and then I'm gonna do this one, and then I have a matching friend here, and I'll show you a couple different options. I can't decide if I wanna leave all of the, uh, the handles in line, I was thinking these would be good for like cookies or cake pops. They kind of get smaller as they go up because the mugs do take up a lot of room. But I just thought it looked cool. I think like that it's good. And then I had these smaller ones that I was thinking and do this one at the very Yeah, but then top. that tier right there, Sudi, like has no use. You can't really put anything on it. You could it. totally put like some small chocolates or something around I there. like it better if you stop. I mean, you can do what you want, but like in my mind, I see that and go. That so see what comments, see what everybody else thinks. All right, what do you think? Think we should add a fourth tier to this one? And I'm gonna, now that, now that we've got this idea, cause we see tons of cool cups and mugs and plates We'll try and things, to get some better ones. And they're just random, like there'll be one or two of them, like who's gonna buy that from the thrift store? So we're gonna start repurposing them. And I actually like, they're a little bit off color from each, Sorry, I can't Off color from each other. Just kick it out of the way and be done. There's like a whole <laughs> pile of paper here from all that fiesta. There's a huge mess There's over no on the floor. There's no way around it. Um, but I'm gonna keep an eye out for like better matches. This is just, I wanted to do it today on the video because I was excited Listen about it. Just do that like that there. Okay. Uh -huh. So I'm gonna try to, in the future, I'm gonna try to find plates and, and mugs that go together a little better. We might, if these sell, we might do a few more of them. But the E6000, this is just the clear E6000. Um, it works really well. I was thinking about trying the Gorilla Glue construction adhesive, but I've had such good luck with this. I'm not going to break the mold. I'm just going to use this glue. I feel like with um, dishes, that the E6000 really does work the best. And it does take a little while to dry, 
And no, it will not be dishwasher safe. You'll be able to wash it, but you're not going to want to run it through the dishwasher and you're going to kind of want to be gentle about it when you're cleaning it. So somebody said you could use clear candlesticks, which you could. We don't have any. And I like it better with the mugs. I've seen the candlesticks done a million times, but I do love the mugs. Yep. And I think it's kind of fun with the handle. I saw some really fancy ornate mugs that had a handle, but they were the wrong color. They were like a brownish tan color that I was like, no, I don't really want that on my white dishes. And so the mugs were 75 cents a piece and the plates were what, like a buck? A buck. So I might, this I might, 50 cents. yeah, I might be like $5, $6 all in. So I'm just going to go around the, uh, the top of the rim of this cup here, this mug. And I'm going to do a pretty healthy amount because I don't want any, uh, any gaps or anything. I want it to kind of seat down on there. Okay. Uh, you're supposed to use ventilation with the E6000. So make sure your room is well ventilated. It's a big room. It'll be all right. Why is there a car out there? I don't know. Maybe they're reading their texts so they aren't driving. All right, this is mostly centered. <coughs> Plate number one. Jamie's opening a window. I think they're being they're, they're double paned too, so that won't. There's another window on the outside. Oh. <laughs> All right, well, we've used it inside, no problem. So. It's a large room. I'm not, and it's got good ventilation. I'm not super worried so about it. So put the top cup right side up. Oh, so do it, do it like this. Oh yeah, that'll give you more space. That'll give you more space on that smaller one. Yeah. Oh, and that makes that top lip of that plate sit down perfectly. You like guys are so magic. smart. Oh, oh, it's magic, you know. So we'll let this sit for a full 24 hours before I try to do anything with it or scrub it down good or do anything like that. And it should be nice and dry. The E6000 actually sets up fairly quickly. But usually it'll still move around for about an hour on you. Are you going to grain sack strike this? What are we doing with this? Um, yeah, if you get it dry, painted and dry. We'll do some stenciling on there. So we were discussing for some future videos coming up. And I was thinking, we've been doing lots of fun little craft projects. We always do during the holidays. But if you guys have enough interest, comment below. We've been wanting to try to do more big pieces. We used to, when we first got started on the channel, we did a lot of custom work. And we did a lot of really large, like, dressers and hutches and things like that. Um, and we haven't done a hutch in a long time. We have one in the garage that has been there probably six, seven months. And we just not been inspired to do it, but I think I've got an idea for it. So comment below if you guys want to see kind of more videos on furniture, because as we move into the winter season, it's harder to do some of these bigger seasons, which is why we do some of bigger seasons. It's harder to do some of these bigger pieces, which is why we do some of the smaller crafting things. But let us, uh, let us know in the comments if you want to see kind of more furniture on the channel and we can, we can work that out because we do have a couple things that we need to clean out of the garage. Basically, someday we're gonna get the farmhouse finished and we're gonna have to move, so we gotta paint our way out of the garage. So I'm just kind of eyeballing this from the top because it was that mark didn't really do much for me because I couldn't see it once I put the mug on there. It was, it was well intended, but unless you draw a circle around the edge, it's not gonna, that you can see, it's not gonna do much. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it from top angles, making sure the plate kind of looks centered on here. Um, they said, yes, more furniture. Love big pieces. You know what I realized? I don't want to get paint on this. Yeah, because we, we, I mean, that used to be all we did was big pieces of furniture on I'm the channel. I'm going to get an apron. Probably like our first 60 or 70 videos was just large pieces of furniture. And we've been doing a bunch of different stuff lately because, you know, we've got... We've now got over 600 videos on the channel, so if you, uh, if you were looking for something to craft or do, there's a good chance if you look up Jamie Ray Vintage Painted Hutch or Painted Piano or Painted Dresser, there's going to be a few videos on all of those things when you search it. So just because we haven't done a video recently doesn't mean we haven't done a video on it. <laughs> And they won't always show up unless you do a specific search. So if you have that project that you're looking for, 
throw up the search engine on that and see what comes up. But if you type in Jamie Ray Vintage and then a specific thing you're looking for, there's a good chance something will come up with over 600 videos. Okay, so this one we're doing like this, and I'm going to try to line the handle up because I think it'd be cooler with the handles lined up. I don't know why. Just It just works for my It'll brain. It'll make your eyes not twitch. Yeah, it, it helps It helps my... Uh, all right. My even brain work work out a little bit. I'm gonna better. go behind you because I don't step on the paper. Okay. And I got a little down here. I'm gonna wipe that off before it dries, but I'm gonna let it cure up just a little bit. Update on the farmhouse. We have scheduled an inspection for Tuesday for the form, so that way they can pour the footings next week. So yeah. if the um, weather does what it says it's going to do we should be able to pour the footings for the foundation it's supposed to Next rain week. tomorrow but then we have an entire week of partly cloudy and sunny days and temps that get up into the 40s so that's pretty rare for december up here usually where we we could easily be under a foot of snow on christmas so yeah. we will we're we're hoping that it holds out because if we get these if we get the footings poured, everything else can just, like if it snows, it can just be brushed off and we can pour the rest of it, no problem, the foundation walls up on top of those footings. We can just brush the snow off and no big deal, but right now the, the big issue is getting the dirt compacted and having it be dry enough. Okay. All right, there we go. Caitlin says we should redo some of our old looks and show them using new products and see it. And we've also changed techniques a little bit since then. Oh, Caitlin with the good ideas. Yeah. Caitlin has a lot of good That's ideas. That's why we keep her around. Yeah. All right, Caitlin has and, lots And she's family. Yeah, she's family. <laughs> I'd keep her around even if she wasn't family. All right, I gotta turn this bench or- All right, you guys, I'm gonna go grab some Hershey Kisses that we have and we'll see what this looks like. All decked out. With, with some fun stuff on it. Here, bring me some cookies. There's some cookies in the toilet paper closet. What? Cookies in the toilet paper closet? Hey, shh, don't tell people. That's where I have my stash. You're down to two boxes. I'm down to two boxes. Oh, gosh. All right. Um, let's see. Make a bench pillow with a feed sack. I actually have somebody sewing me grain sack pillows, so... I'm excited about that. Uh, Susan, that's smart. I actually thought about that today. On your Saturday Night Live, you should start with painting your furniture and then do your thrift haul while it dries. What does anyone think about IOD transfers on your outdoor kitchen cabinets? I think that'd be cute. These are the Trader Joe cookies Jamie loves that they only sell during the holiday seasons. Also, one of the many uses we use for bunk bands, holiday Hershey's. Um, I need to wipe off this E6000 real quick, though, where I got a little... Smear. Oh, yeah. Please don't contaminate my cookies with that. These are my favorite cookies. Well, I can't say they're my favorite. Well, I'm not going to put your cookies on there. I'm going to put the Hershey Kisses on there. Oh, okay. So they're in the wrappers. All right. I'm off camera now. All right. I'm coming back on camera. Here we go. Price tag's still on the bottom cup. Yep. There's, uh, there's price tags on all of them. I don't think he's removed them yet. I'll get it. All right. I'm missing the warmer weather because we could like go outside and spray stuff. This would have taken about five minutes to spray this whole bench. So this is just a disinfectant wipe. Worked out pretty well here. Zip this E6000 right off. I'm gonna hit the rest of the plate with it too. While I, I had a cake plate break at home and I fixed it with E6000. I bought it from the store and it broke. I think that that's really cute. The top needs something cute as a handle, like something to grab onto up here. Oh, like drill it and, well, it's already glued so you can't. I don't know about drilling it. What about that? And then you could put something in the cup. Or is the cup just wrong? Maybe a different cup? I have this one. I like that cup. I, I like that. And you could put something in the cup. You could put flowers. Yeah, or you could put like a little, I don't know, something. Something. Zeb's not really into decorating. He's like, you know, just put something in it. Just use it up a little bit. Yep, they love the cup on the top, people are. 
that's kind of the creative process. That's why we don't like to have things 100% planned out before we go live. Because we like to share kind of how we come up with the ideas. Usually just talking it through. I mean, worst case scenario, we spent five bucks on, on cups and plates, so... This bench will probably need a second coat in a few areas, but it's gotten pretty good coverage. It's pretty dry. All right, so this is a little bit different mug, but all the plates are different, and they're different colors, so I'm, I'm okay Well, different with it. shades. They're not, and none of that's color. You know, I disagree that white is just a shade. <laughs> it's totally a color. Do you guys think that white is a shade or white a color? White and black, you know, pretty. Right, you got the art issue. I also argued with my art teacher about this several times, so... Oh. <laughs> I'm like, I'm surprised you would say that, because you are definitely taking way more art classes than me, but if it's something you had a, an opinion on for a while... There's just so many different shades of white and variations, it's, it's, a, it's a color. I guess if it was like true white and when they start no When they start naming it things like white swan, that's a beautiful shade of white swan. That, that <laughs> swan is such a beautiful shade. <laughs> so I'm using DIY paint in white swan. And you can pick it up at JamieRayVintage.com. If you heard us talking about our website, we have an awesome DIY website and we ship stuff um, across the U.S. and um, worldwide. You're going to need to wipe off that fiesta wear. It's been white swan. It's got a little bit of white swan on it. Yeah, you didn't move all the fiesta wear before I started painting Luckily, DIY paint before it's sealed is water soluble, so it will wash right off, no problemo. All right, the problem I have, the problemo I have right now is that my hands are covered in paint, and I need you to move this. Hold on, I'm, I'm centering my stuff a little. In the print world, white and black are considered non-colors. I know, I know. Brenda says you're funny. Oh, look at my apron, it's on backwards. I can't even see it. I guess I can wipe my hands on it backwards. Have you guys used the French horn? French horns we collected? No, we haven't. I couldn't. Come, I couldn't come up with an idea. And Zeb has been busy. They were kind of his baby. Maybe next year. Watch you paint in your living room. Taught me so much when I was first getting started. More, please. All right, I'm gonna bring this up close. Hopefully without shifting or tipping oh, it. Oh, somebody said peppermint sticks on top. Oh, perfect. For the holidays, that would be really cool. Ta-da! I think that's cute. You did a good job. I mean, I had, I was like, oh, ye of little faith, but you pulled it out. We can use that at our white elephant party, our adult Christmas party coming up. Yeah, it's party season, you know, you could make a whole slew of these and have all kinds of stuff on you in the center of your table. Right, I really do need you, though. Could you please move this yes to where? Oh, yeah. Hang on. I, I gotta have get, to get to right here. I got to get my sticker off. And then I got to... Okay, I'll I gotta touch, touch it. Them. I'm over here. Well, once this E6000 dries, it'll be pretty strong. I, I tested it when we did the Sunday cups with the plates, and I picked picked it up and rotated it around, and it, it held. I'm not sure about these three tiers. I'll probably be more gentle with it and uh, pick them up from the side because I don't want all that to go, go crashing down. But it, it's pretty sturdy. Like if a kid bumps it or or uh, you've got some cookies over here and not over here, it's not going to go toppling over. No, that E6000 is legit. I always like to paint where you should have plugs, so if I never get back to putting the plugs in that are missing, where the screws are, then at least it's painted. <laughs> All right, I need that other um, thing of white one over there. All right, why don't we do some stenciling? <clears throat> I need to drink water. I'm feeling much better, but I'm still not 100%. All right, you guys get the idea. Done. I'm not going to fill that whole thing up. Yeah. <laughs> Could you pass me that quart over there unless you want me to step on the crinkling papers? I'll do it. I'll step on the papers. I need that quart of paint. It's coming your way. Oh. That was just as loud as the crinkling papers. Yeah, I feel like that was maybe loud. Oh, paint hey, down. I really need this fiesta wear move. I I'm can't touch it. it. My hands are covered in white. I'm coming to move it. We're having issues here. And now I got white paint. I'm so tired. Good thing it comes off. I'm a hot mess. I just need you to move it. I'm moving it. Thank you. Okay. Phew. All right. Oh, I also need a flathead screwdriver. I can't get this lid off. I would go get it, but then I'll step on the papers. 
Oh, here's a screw. I bet this would work. Let's see. Oh, it worked. All right. Sometimes you got to get resourceful. There's just so much of this. I know. And it's so mix and matched. <laughs> That's the glorious thing about Fiesta wear is it all works good together. I don't like Fiesta wear when it's all just one color. I only like it mixed and matched. That's my personal opinion. Do you like Fiesta wear when it's all one color, guys? Or do you like like mixed match sets? I think it's more fun. Like if you're gonna have bright Fiesta wear, it might as well be a bunch of different colors. Alright, all the Fiesta wear is out of the way and safe. Thank you, thank you. Alright, um, is the heat gun in here anywhere? It's, yep. it's drying pretty well on top, but if you heat gun it, then we'll be able to stencil that. And then, did you grab that grain sack stencil? I have I'm thinking, one over uh, there. Or did you skeleton not Skeleton key grain sack stripe would be good. Did you not want to use that one? Oh, did you have one out already, sweetie? That one that was on the top, that French one. Um, yeah, but I was going to put a grain sack stripe across. Oh, the stripe, yeah. I yeah. have it. It's over here. And then, where is it? Got it right here. Oh, perfect. All right, I'll go look. Will you dry that, and then I'll look for skeleton key? Yes. It looks like it's, it's pretty well dry, so. Is it drying out pretty fast? Yeah, but that will help. Okay. Um, well, Jimmy got a message. All right. Julie Marie, I do watch football. The 49ers are good this year. But I'm a Cardinals fan because I'm from Arizona, and they haven't been good in a long, long time. And I'm, che I'm currently cheering for the Utes. I hope they stay in the top four so that uh, I think they're there on the polls, but I want them to get into the, uh, the college football playoffs, so we'll see. Since they've done the playoffs, they haven't been in. Okay, so we like to use these mats from Ikea. We've got the number 20 and the number 24 stencil brushes here. These are the JRV stencil brushes. We're going to be using the um, JRV grain sack stripe. There's three that come in the pack. This is the triple stripe. And then we also have a French stencil. <clears throat> it's just a French address. And that's going to go on there as well. So these are JRV stencil. You guys can pick up at jamierayvintage.com, but you can also go to jrvwholesale.com and find a local retailer. So that's awesome. <laughs> cool Cake says that the uh, Hershey's Kisses look really good. They actually are delicious. Okay, so go ahead and really dry this part right here and we'll do this grain sack. So I was thinking, should we do the stripe on this top, like top and bottom would be cute. Okay, we'll see if I can pull that off. That's a long way to run that grain sack stripe straight. I have faith in you. <laughs> I might run a little roll of tape down there to help me keep it straight. Oh, that's smart. I'll go grab your tape. Okay. I have so to I'm going to pour out. This is skeleton key. I'm going to pour this out on here. It's like a blue gray. It pairs well with the white swan. We're going to use that for the stripe. And then we're going to be using weathered wood which is a really pretty like brownish gray color it's really dark we're going to use that for the front stencil lori jane says we need a retailer in dallas lori are you volunteering you want to become a january vintage stencil retailer <laughs> all right i'm just going to leave this in here and you can dip it and then offload but i poured you out some skeleton key Okay, you want to hand that to me over here and I can get this part here? Cool cakes and crafts, this DIY paint they can't reach. Oh. This DIY paint is thick, it's clay based. Well, and I'll let you in on a little secret. 
I put it really thick on the top so that way I could stencil right away without having to second coat it. The sides are thinner because you don't want to put it on thick because it'll drip. I will second coat the sides of this bench. I probably won't worry about second coating underneath. I did paint it so it's neat, but it doesn't need to be perfect. And I'm never worried about full, full coverage because we're going to hit this and distress it. And so if we get full coverage, then it just means we have to take more off. But the clay paint is the bomb.com. All right, we're, we've still got a couple little wet spots where you had it a little thick. But yeah, this is pretty much one coat on here. One thick coat? Yeah, you did it right. All right, got your comments there. There. Oh, they're talking about the paint. Yeah. If you don't want your paint to be thick, you can also dip your brush in water and thin it out. I always sand everything when you sand it. You get really buttery smooth. Oh, I'm in the and I'm lazy, so I don't want to do thin coats. I just put thicker coats on it. Okay, there. I'm going to... Whoops. The tiered tray will be used for treats. I'll probably keep that one. I might not sell it. Or I'll use it for my party, and then I'll sell it afterwards. I do that, too. All right, watch your little uh, holder here. I'm going to bring this over here so they can... I love that you stencil the bench so then you can take it out next year also. Question, is there a way to find out where the DIY retailers are in your area? Yeah, there is a website you can find DIY retailers um, through DIY paint. You can find that. Jamie, do you have enough for the rest of the class? Oh, enough. Come on, I got plenty. I don't know how many people are watching them. Look at that camera. 856. We're I don't have to know go. that I have 856 Hershey's Kisses, but if you come by, I'll share. So I was going to use the tape, but I think I'm just going to line it up right here on the edge of this router lip on the edge of the bench and run it down that way. And I think that'll work good. Okay, so this is the number 20, right? The JRV number 20 stencil brush. And you want to always offload. You want your brush to be almost like you're dry brushing when you stencil. That keeps the paint from going up underneath the stencil and essentially having what we call stencil bleed through. And on this long one, if you just keep your fingers on it, I'm not even going to tape it down. I'm just going to keep my fingers just kind of right here in front of where I'm stenciling. That'll keep it from bouncing up too much because even if you tape this down, these center stripes are so long, they want to sometimes move on you just a little bit. I've done it both ways and I get a better result if I just kind of keep my fingers running in front here. I'm really pushing your stencil uh, ability here with this big long. We'll see how straight it is when we're done. Are you just using the, the ledge of the bench? That's what I do. Yeah. Essentially, Kimberly says, oh man, I cleaned my kitchen and forgot about us. So essentially, Kimberly, I read her comment earlier, we posted a nativity that we painted for our house, and we've done it once before in a live video, and essentially, Kimberly said she saw us, she painted a bunch of nativities and white waxed them just the way we did. Today, she was at a craft store or sale, and she said people were almost, literally almost fighting over those nativities that she painted and white waxed because they hadn't really seen anything like that before and loved it. So... Little pro tip for you, the painted nativities do sell well. Oops, the paint wasn't dry enough here from the heat gun, the white paint, so we might have to touch that up or distress it. It's chippy. Lori says she loved the nativity. Uh, Marlene says, paying attention to this bench and how you're doing it. She has benches too. So the, what our plan is to use the triple grain sack stripe on the top and on the bottom to mimic what a grain sack would look like. And then we're going to put the French address um, in the middle of it. Would a roller brush work for the grain sack stripe stencil? Maybe. If it was a high density foam roller, maybe we could try it. So the trouble I have with foam rollers, and maybe it's just our stencils, our stencils are so thick, you have to push pretty hard to get good coverage with a roller. And you have to put so much paint on there, it tends to just pooch out underneath the stencil and you don't get a good clean stencil. Somebody asked if we distress the nativity. Sometimes we do a little bit. 
Um, sometimes they just kind of naturally distress when we're working on them. So we just kind of go with the flow. I don't overly distress them, no, because sometimes they're like multicolored underneath. And if you do too much distress, it's a little bit busy for me. All right, let's see. Sally Hutton says you can do it, Zeb. I'm trying. Zeb the stencil king, LOL. <laughs> less about stenciling and more about patience. Oh, it's Denise's birthday. Happy birthday, Denise. Happy birthday. Denise Shoop. She's from Utah. Oh, yeah. She came to our class when we had Debbie here. Carts and Millie said, I did a race stencil for my JRV stencil sign for my shop. Yeah, I haven't done a race stencil in a while, but I did use, we carry a stencil called the Vine, and then I did a raised Vine stencil, I don't know, maybe uh, when we first got started, so like a year ago, and it turned out really cool. How has the shop been doing? Um, this last week has been slow, but that's pretty typical after a big sale weekend. You're gonna be slow and, you know, but today was it good. Bal it balances out. Like we were slow for a few days, but today was like a typical Saturday. And we have been doing sales, just smaller ones in the shop. Um, Caitlin came up with the 12 days of Christmas sales. So every day between now and Christmas, we are, that we're open, we're running a different sale inside the shop and that's getting people excited. So I'm just barely overlapping it. I found with this uh, stencil, if you overlap it too much, so what I mean by overlapping, if I, I put the design back here farther, it gets thicker there and you can tell really easily. So I just barely, maybe like a millimeter or two, like a, a sixteenth of an inch is all that's overlapped right here. All right, so, oh, Anna says, can you address what you do after the holidays in your shop? What new merchandise, et cetera? Well, first of all, after the holidays, all the Christmas, it has to go. Because, like, me personally, I'm, like, done with Christmas. So Honestly, I get rid of like, it. sometimes even the week before, people are no longer decorating and that stuff's just sitting there. Yeah, well, and I have to say, honestly, by the time Christmas rolls around, most of... I don't have a, as much Christmas as other stores, so most of our Christmas is gone. So like at this point, I'm not adding any more Christmas into my shop, and I'm just going to sell it out. Um, and then starting in January, I neat, make everything neat and clean. Because in January, think, people are thinking about getting organized, getting ready for the new year. So anything like calendars, little drawers, things that help get them organized, sell really, really well. So I start... Like now I'm starting to try to find organizers that I can sell. Um, and then I also, I bring spring in like pinks and lavenders and things to kind of bring in those lighter colors that pay homage to the spring decor because people are starting to decorate for Valentine's Day. And then in February, they're already starting to decorate for March. So I want to have those items in January so they can start bringing them into their decor. So that turned out pretty good. I'm, I'm happy with that. All right. I did not dry this side as much, so we'll see how much paint the stencil peels off on the white. But, you know, we'll, we'll just stress it and work with it. It'll be okay. Will I post my shop number, like the shop phone number? Um, we have the shop phone number on the website, I believe. But the shop phone number is only for local information. Like, if you want to purchase something and you live here locally or if you have a question, I don't actually answer the shop phone number. I don't know if you're, that's what you're asking. Um, spring and she the also shop. doesn't know it offhand, or she probably tell it to you right now. <laughs> I know it's it. programmed in her phone. I know it. It's the but the shop phone number is not something that most people that don't live here even need. But if you want something shipped from the shop, you can email Lehigh Shop at jamierayvintage.com. Oh, it looks great, Zeb. That's what they looks nice, Zeb. Love it, Zeb. Love it, Zeb. Good job. So good job. Kaylin says, spring up the shop, LOL. Do spring cleaning and do some sales on the things that have just been sitting too. Absolutely. So if you've had things around for six months, so it's time to spring clean those out. Um, we also will probably clean out the back of the shop. And um, probably in January, we're going to start doing classes because it's people start getting the winter blues and they want to get out of the house. Um, so it's a great way to bring in revenue into the shop. Oh, Maggie says, try stamping with the IOD ink and turmeric on tarnished pearl is gorgeous. I definitely will try that out. Those IOD inks, the colors are great on them. We haven't, we've been so busy and so many new products all at once, we haven't played with the colored inks hardly at all. No, we just did that one pillow for the house. Like, that's literally the only time we've used the colored And we inks. were going to do masking, but we never got around to that either. 
Oop, I was too, I didn't offload my brush enough. I'll show you that up close. The stressing will fix it, but I'll show you what we're talking about when we talk about offloading. Tarnished and, Pearl does not have a luster. It's just um, like an off-white color. It's an off-white It's an off -white shade. <laughs> Looks great, very crisp accent. Did I miss the house Christmas tour? No. We might not get to a house Christmas tour. We're getting to it. Jamie, if we don't get to it, we won't get it Jamie finished. is struggling to decorate it because really she just wants to decorate the farmhouse and it's not done and she's having trouble getting motivated. Is well, the we've truth been of it. really busy and I want to do new projects and I'm like, oh. so I don't have my Z time. Like you're always working at the farmhouse. So we will try. We, we're getting closer. That's why we did the nativity video because I really wanted to redo that nativity. So that way we've got that done. I did buy a new rug for the front porch. So hopefully sometime next week we can get the Christmas tour up on our channel. Well, if we don't do any crafting, it will essentially look the same as last year's tour. Yeah. So if you check out our Christmas playlist, you can see our tour from last year. I got to craft some things so you guys get some new ideas. There, are, there we, did a, we did probably seven or eight crafts last year for Christmas. We did a completely handmade, decorated Christmas, and it... It turned out awesome. It was really fun. Um, Angelina said, do you decorate the outside of the house? I decorate like my front porch. That's about it. We get a lot of snow here, so it doesn't make sense to go like super crazy. And I don't do Christmas lights on the house. It's not worth falling. So Melissa says, if a solid wood chest has been painted with bright multicolors and sealed, would it need to be sanded? So it depends on what it's painted with and how well that paint is sticking. When I'm not sure, I usually lightly sand it just to scuff it up, remove any loose paint, and then I paint it with a DIY paint. So Maggie says, I found that Golden Ticket over Cowgirl Coral looks rose gold. That's, that's a good idea. I'll have to try that. Oh, Anna says, I live in Florida, so thinking about putting in some lake water decor as our snowbirds are here until April. Absolutely, that's a good idea. It's always good to, you know, keep things switched up because you want to give reason, get people excited. If it's just the same stuff that they're used to seeing, they're not as excited about it. All right, I'm showing you the top there. All right, so right down, oh, where'd it go? There. You can see my bottom line is not very crisp right there in the middle of the camera. And that is a result of not offloading enough. So... Distressing will fix that. You won't notice it once we distress it because this this uh, DIY paint powders when you distress it and so it'll just even everything out. But, you know, offload your brush and you'll be okay. All right, Jamie, you want this right in the center? Mm -hmm. I mean, so Paula says, Jamie, what's your light turquoise color? Um, maybe you're thinking Apothecary or Farm Fresh. Um, if you, but a true turquoise to me would be more like mermaid tail, but that's not light or old 57. Um, sometimes with those brighter colors, I tone them down and mix them with white. Like the other day I mixed 50-50 mint chip with beadboard and it was gorgeous. We painted a ton of stuff. It was like this really soft mint color that I really, really loved. Oh my goodness. I was an eighth of an inch off of the center, just eyeballing it. Good job. Which turquoise is the most boho? Probably old 57. Yeah, it's very bright. I paint it on fabric but need to remove a spot. Does that work? Like a spot of paint? Because it's probably not going to come off unless your fabric is like like the sweatshirt it might come off. But if it's like a porous fabric, it's going to be hard to get off. What color was the nativity painted in? Um, the nativity was painted in weathered wood, which is the same color that we're using on this stencil right here, this JRV stencil. And oh, if you you're want just me to weathered in, wood the stencil? You, yeah, if you're just tuning in, we have white swan, skeleton key, and we're going to be using weathered wood. We used the grain sack stencil along with the JRV stencil brush. And now we're using the sacks and location stencil. As, as it's a French address. It's French, so pretend I said that with a French uh, accent. And you can pick all of that up at jamierayvintage.com. Oh, sea glass is a light turquoise. Yes, Cynthia, you guys know those colors. Better. There's so many blue turquoisey colors. Will distressing the gray over the white cause the white to get dirty? Um, yes and no, but what we like to do, like we won't distress it while we're live. We'll wait till it sits overnight. And then we're going to distress it lightly and then we will not wipe it off. We will blow the dust off 
and that will help it to not smear. Yeah, we use our air compressor. If you take, because this paint's so pigmented, so if you just dress it and then you just go to wipe the dust off, you're just gonna smear that pigment across the top. Another pro tip if you're worried about it is you can put a thin coat of sealer over the top of this and then you can actually add like big top or liquid patina to your paint and it makes it less pig, like less powdery and that helps too. So those are a couple options for you to help with your stenciling. We're just really careful and we haven't had too many problems. And we haven't shown it a bunch because we don't usually show cleaning our brushes in the videos or our stencils. Um, but I've been using just the brush, like the stencil brush. I'll wash it and the stencil off at the same time. And it helps, the stencil brush is soft enough. It's softer than like a, like a bristle, a plastic bristle brush that you would use for cleaning your dishes or something. And it doesn't, see like I've got like this little raised lip right here. It helps keep that from happening when you use the actual brush to clean the stencil. You can also take an iron and a thin cloth and iron your stencils and flatten them out. We just haven't taken the time to do that. So some of this white swan is not dry underneath and I've got kind of like this fun effect going on. Happy accident. Oh, Julie Marie, so funny. You both are so good at this. Have you ever thought of doing videos or opening a shop, LOL? <laughs> AKT design says that's how I clean ours too. Yeah, it's the best way. We used to use the plastic scrubby brushes that you can get for like your dishes and things, but it, is, it works so much better and it gets your brush clean and your stencil clean at the same time. Really offloading is the biggest thing. Like you want your brush super, super dry. You need a good stencil brush. I'm not just saying this because I have the JRV stencil brushes. But I'm telling you, I have used cheap ones and a good stencil brush will change your life. So the JRB, we design them. They're a little bit more high end. They're a little bit more expensive. They're an investment. So if you can't afford all of them, I would buy just one and go from there because they do make it a lot easier. Well, if you can imagine how much we stencil, we haven't worn any out yet. Yeah, and I'm impatient. So having a good stencil brush gives me a little bit of an edge against any bleed through. Oh, uh, MH says everybody liked the video. So if you're watching this video and you like it, give us a thumbs up because that helps promote our video to more people. The more people that like and comment on our videos, the more that YouTube will show them to more people because they're realizing that people like them and it's a good video. So that really does help us. YouTube right now has a bunch of things going on with the COPA laws, which we've been working in. It really doesn't affect us as much because we don't have a kid channel or videos. I had to do children. about 10 videos. I went through the yeah. other day. Out of 600, we had like 10 videos we marked for kids. But even so, we have noticed like a decline in our numbers because of the COPA stuff and the algorithms changing. So we would be so, so grateful if you guys could share our videos, thumbs up, comment on them. Um, we do post five times a week, so if you're like, hey, I haven't seen a video from Jamie and Zeb in a while, just hop onto our channel because the videos are definitely there. We're still doing our five videos a week, so there's definitely some content there. If you need some binge watching, there are like 26 house episodes all in sequential order in the playlist. <laughs> um, let's see, what color is the closest to uh, antique white and which brush do I need to get from you to paint the dresser? So I would suggest um, the round brush, the, I think it's the one and three quarters. Caitlin can tell you what the official name for it is by Paint it's Pixie. It's the number 12. The number 12, okay. The number 12 Paint Pixie is a really great brush to paint a dresser. It does a lot of different things. It's pretty universal. And then for a antique white, I like either white swan or tarnished pearl. Tarnished pearl is more of a cream and White Swan is more of a white white. Um, let's see, can you talk about farmhouse finishes paint you sell? So farmhouse finishes does not have a sealer on it, but it is less water soluble than Sweet Pickens. So it can be painted on walls without sealing it unless you have children. So that's good. I like it. All right, don't let me hit you. No, <laughs> I won't let you. Now, there are a few spots you can see that are a little bit streaky, so I'll come back and touch up that white a little bit, but it did turn out awesome. Yeah, and distressed, all of these little imperfections will flatten out because this clay bait, 
face paint the DIY, it just gets really smooth. We use a 220 grit sandpaper and an order bill sander, and it'll just really smooth that out. And it doesn't necessarily take all the paint off. It just kind of gives it like a little aged wear, like a thousand people have sat on this over the years yeah. instead of being freshly painted. So we took a $12 bench and turned it into like a $50 bench. I'm thinking maybe even $59.95 since we stenciled it. I normally yeah. sell for $49.95, but when I stencil things, I always add about 10 ish dollars to them because there is a little extra uh, effort involved there so i'm thinking 59.95 and didn't take very long we probably have another 30 minutes to touch up the paint and then do some wax and seal it yeah now i will be using uh some good clear wax on this because these the finish on it some was there and some wasn't this could get a ton of bleed through if i use a liquid sealer so a clear wax is our best bet. So I'm going to do like two or three coats of clear wax and call it good. All right, guys, go raid your thrift stores for fun dishes to make trays with yeah. and uh, benches to stencil. Yeah, be sure that you hit up jamierayvintage.com for all your paint and products. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more. DIY. Bye, guys. Love you. Catch you later.